Hello, I am Fantastic and Fantastic, and today I'm going to be talking about the new Weapon Assist Evolutions for the Indian series Pantheon. So, I always love the fact that Pantheon cards are receiving Weapon Assist because as an older player, I have countless duplicates of Pantheon cards sitting around and doing pretty much nothing. And when they are given a weapon assist, regardless of how difficult it is to actually evolve, it gives them the chance to be used again in hopefully a meaningful way. And for these new weapon assists, all of them are going to follow a similar template pattern. They will give a single skill boost and then two rows of their respective color. So for Shiva, it will be a skill boost and two fire rows plus a different type of active skill. Now, naturally, a skill boost helps any team transform. The rows are obviously passive damage for monocolor teams, but I wouldn't let that be the deciding factor of whether or not you want to utilize them because a skill boost is universally helpful. And if you are able to get a beneficial active skill, you can kind of ignore the rows because you are getting a skill boost, which is helpful because there are a lot of times where it's like, I need X, Y, Z active, but I also need a skill boost to come along with it. And this gives a chance for that to actually occur. So naturally the decision of which evolution you wish to pursue will be based upon your own monster box, what goals you are trying to push forward through to. And one other thing I want to mention is that the evolution material required to make these is not technically available when this video is posted. It comes out on Friday. There will also be a chance to exchange rainbow medals to a black medal to give yourself the gem itself. Now, before the Quillen gem and the Schnitzel dragon gem, they were in the monster change for three to one ratio. The black gem or black token requires five. So it's five to one. But at the same time, if you have hundreds of these rainbow event medals stacked up and doing absolutely nothing in your monster box, trade them in. They're meant to be used as a convenience way to save time. But I think we've kind of gotten to the mentality that we need to keep saving because something big and exciting will come out. I highly doubt something truly magical will come out that's going to cost hundreds and hundreds of them. So use them to save yourself time. And if you are a newer player who's never been able to acquire those gems or dragons before because they're appearing in hard dungeons, it might be a meaningful way to acquire these evolution materials. But at the same time, I feel like these weapon assists are a bit more specialized and they're definitely catered towards more end game content. So without further ado, let's take a look at Shiva. So Shiva has actually become a tremendously strong sub because he has super poison resist, he's got a damage reduction and damage reduction has become significantly more valuable because of World of Carnage 2 slash Ruler of Hell's Hall, which features numerous large unavoidable hits. So you need to have an active skill that gives you damage reduction to tank it, regardless of how durable your leader skill actually is. So Shiva was definitely utilized heavily, especially for myself, for my Gillian and or Sena teams. It does make a big difference when you have an on-demand shield that can save your life. So. Naturally, his weapon assist kind of keeps that style, so to speak, because you get that skill boost, which is definitely helpful for transforming. You have two fire rows, which again helps the passive damage for those monocolor teams, but his active skill completely ignores defense values. And that actually is helpful because there are spawns in World of Carnage 2 that have two billion defense, and turning that into zero makes them trivial to overcome. Plus, the damage reduction is going to ensure you don't actually die from any large unavoidable hit or even just like floor two. I find floor two can be quite difficult sometimes. So having this big damage reduction if you're not running Grandis can make a sizable difference. But outside of Ruler of Hell's Hall, I feel like this weapon assist has a lower value because, well, we don't need the large damage reduction any other place. And the defense break is helpful, especially for like training arena two, but at the same time, maybe you have other ways to overcome it. But then again, if you completely ignore all their defense values, it might become even easier for you to play through it. So maybe something to keep in the back of your mind. But either way, I think this is quite a high value weapon assist because it's providing a meaningful active and again, awakenings that are actually useful. For Lakshmi's weapon assist, again, same template, but I'm less excited for her, mostly because I feel like she has a lot of overlap of Isis, but a weaker active skill. So Isis's weapon assist gives you three water orb enhances, time extend, but no skill boost. Lakshmi's gives you the skill boost. So again, that skill boost may make the difference. Maybe, maybe not. But if the skill boost doesn't make a difference, I'm gonna pick Isis over Lakshmi because Isis's active skill has a perfect solution for the red ogre in ruler of hell's hall because it will preemptively awoken bind and then bind your leaders so being able to clear the awoken binds and binds is meaningful which again lakshmi does do so it can be a way to have this kind of cleric healing or cleric bind clearing type of active skill but isis's other effect is 
damage reduction for one turn. And that damage reduction one turn can technically be thought of as almost an effective skill boost, but again, it allows you to survive those hits. And fun enough fact, the Red Ogre has a 600,000 hit, and you're going to have to tank it unless you delay him. So you clear the binds, which you had to do anyways, and then you have the damage reduction to tank the hit if you didn't have enough effective health to withstand 600,000 damage. So it's meaningful in that regards. Lakshmi's active skill, the secondary effect is spawning extra heart orbs. Like, I guess it's not bad, but the damage reduction is a much more impactful effect overall and it just because if you have Isis's weapon I feel like Lakshmi's has lower value overall at least in my opinion it does just because I prefer the damage reduction as opposed to an orb changer that just makes heart orbs. Parvati has a pretty strong active skill now same template for Rose and skill boost but her active skill gives you dark to wood water to hearts so a useful orb changer like i Amusingly enough, like maybe like three, four, or five years ago, I can't remember when, but that type of active skill I like so much because it makes your primary color and hearts. And back then, it was a meaningful thing to do because being able to deal damage and heal was quite difficult. So that active skill is never a bad thing to have charge up for a team. Like I don't really see it ever going to waste. And then it comes with a burst and an RCV buff. So four times attack and four times RCV for two turns. So that's a significantly high burst. It can definitely help you help ensure you can overcome whatever spawn you're facing. Let's say you encounter the devils in World of Carnage 1. Well, four times burst is going to help guarantee you overcome that 1.5 billion defense. Like, it's just going to make your life much easier. Manoa's similar idea. And again, it can overwrite RCV and time debuffs along with a 10 turn cooldown. This is a reasonable cooldown. Plus, you get an orb changer alongside of it. I think this active skill is much more overtuned, especially compared to Vitra, who's coming up, who's much more lackluster by comparison. Indra base form featured a big shield so it's no surprise that he has a big shield through their weapon assist same idea skill boost plus rose but their active skill is two times rcv and vastly reduced damage for two turns so it's kind of like three effective skill boosts if you really argue it because one skill boost from the awakenings two skill boosts from the damage reduction and it's kind of like shiva's shiva's could be four effective skill boosts if you really pushed for it so to speak but the point is, with Indra, you get RCV buff, which could be helpful in itself, but it fully clears binds and awoken binds. So this is kind of like Isis's weapon assist, but better. Isis, I think, is a 10-turn cooldown. Indra's 12. Indra gives you RCV buff and two turns of damage reduction, plus a skill boost. Better value overall, in my opinion. So like I said, Isis is better than Lakshmi. Indra is better than both of them. And I would definitely utilize Indra's weapon assist on non-light teams because like I said, the two rows shouldn't be the reason why you choose it. You're choosing these weapons for the active skill and the fact that it comes with a skill boost because you sometimes need to have a skill boost and a certain active skill to solve problems. And Indra solves so many. I think Indra is kind of like the gift that keeps on giving. He's still a wonderfully strong sub, not as potent as it was like six months ago, but still solid. Big effective skill boost, super poison resist, big health set, not a bad card overall, and the weapon assist is definitely going to make your life easier. So again, if you need to have a way to clear binds and awoken binds, I feel like this weapon assist is going to become my new go-to choice because again, a skill boost tapped on is never going to be a bad thing. And now we come to Vitra, and Vitra I feel got the short end of the stick because it's a 10 turn cooldown, same as Parvati's. He changes the top row to Dark Orb, so I guess that's more convenient. Like, you can swipe your way through it more easily, but then you only get one turn of four times burst. Parvati gave two turns of four turn, four, four, two turns of four times burst for attack and RCV. Vitra only gives the attack aspect. Maybe if you're playing like Shivnia teams, you don't want to actually heal, so maybe you can argue for those points but the point more so the matter is i think the active skill cooldown is far too long compared to what you are receiving perhaps compared to parvati's maybe the pre-made row is what's kind of giving them the extra zest so i feel like vitra's weapon assist as a whole won't be used as much maybe as a way to add on more zest to your farming teams but i feel like with shivnia it's like for dark teams because you probably want to bring a dark team for vitra's active skill Shivnia probably dishes out more than enough damage anyways, and when you have like Lucifer with his like new buff with four attack well below 50%, like damage is rarely an issue I find, at least in training arena 2 even, so I don't see Vitra using, being used as much, especially outside of farming content. So in conclusion, I feel that Indra has probably the most universal value overall. It just jam packs so much value into one active skill. Like as soon as the Brahma gem becomes available, I'm making Indra right away. Like I can guarantee you I will make an Indra because 
it's going to be my best solution for clearing binds and awoken binds. It comes with other great benefits, a relatively low cooldown too, like great stuff all around. Parvati, definitely strong for mono wood teams. Again, if you don't use the rose, it's okay. It's still a useful active skill and it gives you buffs that you may not be able to like weave into your team otherwise. Lakshmi, I feel like it's a very low quality bind awoken bind clear because the secondary effect is not so great overall. And then Shiva has, again, that nice big shield for a long time and the defense break. Useful for sure. Obviously, if you can leverage the rose, it helps, but I feel like Indra is still going to be the superior choice overall. So let me know what you think about these new evolutions in the comments below. Which one is your personal favorite? And if you only can make one whenever it is released right away, which one would you pursue and why? Either way, hopefully you all have a fantastic day. I wish you all the best luck in your own pad adventures and happy puzzling.